Why, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Voice of the Rings, and this is a review for the Gollum game today. If you're new to my channel, welcome. We do Lord of the Rings reviews and play a lot of Lord of the Rings games here, and it's pretty much just a super Tolkien channel. That's the goal of the channel. Uh, today, I want to give you a full, in-depth review, unadulterated, unaffected by any other view or opinion. I kept myself totally clear. I have played 20 hours of the game. There's the Steam thing to prove it to you, almost 20 hours. And I did it all on stream, all on videos. So again, you can see the whole gameplay. I'll link them all down there if you wanna watch them. Um, but we're gonna cover it today. I'm gonna do a fast version, just tell you a little bit what I think, all my different points here. We have about 100 points to cover. <laughs> Just kidding. No, we're not doing that many points. Um, but we are going to cover these points right here that you see on the screen. And um, I'm going to do a quick version of it real fast. And then I'm going to rate them all for you so you can see them. And then uh, we'll do a little more in-depth for the rest of the video. So this will be a lot of fun today. I was really, really focused very hard on not um, getting myself affected by any other reviews or any other people's thoughts. I wanted a pure what I thought of the game. So I played through the game with people and I wanted to see what I thought about the game, where the one of the glitches, right? Where the things that affected people who it kind of game people didn't want to play it. Um, what were the issues? What about the gameplay? What about the art? What about the lore? What about the music? That's what we're gonna go through today. I worked really hard on setting this up. I have tons of points so um, that I went through and I got rid of some, added some. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Let's get straight into it, my friends. Here we go. All right, so to start with the quick part, okay, everyone? To start with my my overall thoughts of the game, you wanna know my overall rating. I'm gonna be, I'm not gonna drag you onto the end of the video. I'm gonna tell you my overall rating. Now, again, in this video, I'm going to break it up. I'm going to rate all 10 of my points here of my review as different, you know, one out of 10, okay? I'm gonna rate them all separately, but I'm gonna give you my quick version and I'm gonna give two different versions of the game. One is like, my nice side, saying on what I really enjoyed stuff, that rating, and then one my more my more critical side. We, You know if you watch my channel that I'm not a very critical person. I'm usually a very ha glass half full kind of person for everything, but obviously I want to be very fair with this review and I want to tell you the good things and the bad things about this game. Okay, so the first impression I have on this game is the price point. I have to say this right off the bat for people who really want to know from my that might want to buy the game and stuff, my loyal viewers here who have been waiting for this review. By the way, I would like to also point out that um, the reason it took me a long time to come out of this review where a lot of people put out reviews in the first week or two of the game is that I wanted to give you guys a full comprehensive view of the game after I completely played it. I want to give it a completely fair chance. I didn't want to be copy paste from other articles kind of thing. Um, again, that's not a slight at any other people who did it, reviews of this game very quickly. Um, but I wanted to do a, a totally unadulterated, again, un affected by any other views or opinions by people. I wanted to be straight from a Tolkien content creator, a lover of video games, played lots of genres, and Tolkien, not that that makes me any better than anyone else, but I wanted to do it from a perspective of after completely playing through the game, giving you my opinion, okay? So that's the, the goal we're going to get through right now. Um, so basically, the big thing about the game when it comes to the money price point, back to that point, is the fact that it really shouldn't be $60. That's too much, okay? So anyway, not to mention the fact that it has a lot of glitches, okay? So if you've heard complaints about the game, unfinished game, terrible game, this blah, 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 blah. Now, there's some really good points about this game, okay? So if they fixed it up a little bit, it could be really good, but it's very unoptimized, okay? So if you go and watch any of my streams or my recordings, you can tell I have a really good computer and it's very hard for my computer to stream it without it being laggy at all with frame lag. Um, that shouldn't be a thing, especially because the graphics and art style is nice, which I'll talk about that in my, that point. Um, but it really shouldn't be that intensive on a computer. Okay. That's the, that's a big one right there. So again, what would be worth? And you were like, well, what if I wanted to play it anyway and just try it, you know, and then I could just refund it on steam if it doesn't work on my computer kind of thing. Um, I would say the price point would be worth like $30. Okay. Minimum, maybe 40 for, I'm talking about the gameplay without bugs with bugs. It's not really, I wouldn't advise buying it until you've watched some of my gameplay and you really want to try it and you have a really good computer again when i played it for me it was perfectly smooth with almost no lag there are a few glitches though but we'll talk about in the glitches point okay in this video but again for my overall arching review real quick here for at the beginning is that again it's probably worth like 20 to 30 dollars that's without the glitches okay from just saying gameplay and stuff um 
but the lore was actually very, very enjoyable for me. Um, one thing that bothered me at the beginning before this game came out is a lot of people were saying this game was going to be terrible before it came out. And that's like saying that you really don't like, I don't know, ketchup, right? And you're like, you ask the person, oh, well, how many kinds of ketchup have you had? I've never had ketchup in my life, but they don't like it. It's like, it's like one of those things because no one could have possibly known about the game. There was no pre-released footage of gameplay or anything. It was just their one little trailer that they had of the game. So um, no one could have possibly have known that at the beginning. That bothered me a little bit because, again, it happens a lot in our culture. People just kind of attack things for no reason before we even know anything about it. It's rightfully so now after the fact. So anyone who's actually played the game or watched gameplay and now doesn't like it for the bugs or glitches, completely rightfully so. Okay? Um... But there's some really cool things about it. I personally loved the lore, okay? I really enjoyed the lore. Some people, I heard very few reasons um, of the actual gameplay and lore and storytelling were the negatives against it. It was pretty much, oh, it's an unfinished game, it's unoptimized, which were true good negative points. Unfortunately, because those failed so bad and it's so unoptimized, even after we waited an extra like three months for the game to come out, which was pretty disappointing in that way too, um, when that happens, it, it it covers up any of the good, right? People people look at things, most people look at things like a movie. If there's one really bad thing or something they don't like, the whole movie is now bad. The whole game is now bad, right? That's kind of how a majority of people look at things. Again, that's why I wanted my version here to not be copy and paste of articles or things like that. Because a lot of game articles immediately came out saying how it was such a bad game in like two days of the game. Some of them came out in like the first three hours. And I'm like, that's impossible. You could not have played the whole game. Now, they're just talking about glitches they were finding at the beginning. Okay. But again, the game was studio was very th close about putting stuff out all at the same time. Okay. They didn't really let anyone have any sneak peeks. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. I loved a lot of the art style. The music was fine. We're going to go through all the points right now. I don't want to talk too much of this intro. But those kind of things I wanted to let you know because that is why I worked so hard. And that's why they, this is, for my normal subscribers, why this review came out, you know, a month after the game's been out. Because I really wanted to play through the game with you guys on streams, on videos, be really fair, straight from what I think is a Tolkien lover and as a video gamer, right? I wanted to see it myself. I didn't want to get any influence. I want to be totally uninfluenced by any other uh, source, okay? Even some of my friends, right, on other channels and stuff. I didn't watch anyone's reviews yet. After I make this review, I'm going to go watch my, my friends' reviews, okay? Um, hopefully, you watch this whole review. Thank you. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you do like this kind of stuff. Okay, so now let's get into the first point here, all right? So, point number one. Here. We oh, and of course, you've been waiting. I think I would rate the game for the quick rate. This is the this is the fast rate. This is me just off the top of my head. With everything taken into consideration, I would still give this game personally a 7 out of 10. Okay? Um, I know some of you are like, what? How could you give it that number? Um, but from a perspective of for other people, for you guys, from the, because of the glitches and the bugs, and I know that if you don't have a supercomputer like mine, it's probably going to be way worse for you guys. I would rate it like a 4 out of 10, okay? And again, that only that negative is you'll see when I add up at the end of this video, when I add up all those ratings, okay? Um, you'll see that that's the big one. The, the game bugs and glitches. That's, you know, the game itself being usable. That's going to be, that's what really hurts it, okay? Everyone's saying that that's the big thing. It's unoptimized. It doesn't feel finished in that way. That kind of stuff. The other stuff did not hurt it as much. This is what hurt it, Okay. Um, so that's my overall view. Me personally, 7 out of 10, because I really didn't have glitches except for streaming it and recording it. It was having a really hard time. But me playing it personally, I only had one or two little glitches for me personally, um, where I know other people could, couldn't even play the game. Okay? That's not really acceptable at all for any game. Uh, the majority of people need to be able to play it. I understand if you have some uh, computers 25 years old, you're probably not going to be able to play new games. But for people who have generic computers from 5, 10 years ago, they should still be able to play it. Okay? So that's how it should be on that. Uh, anyway, so that's my ratings. 7 out of 10 for me personally, just the fast one. And then at the end, it might be different. So you want to still stay for the end. I'd really appreciate if you watch the whole thing because we I'm going to break all the points down now. So here we go. All right, so here we go. Here's point number one. We're going to go over gameplay and mechanics, okay, of the game. 
Some people were disappointed of this, some people weren't, from some of the people that said stuff again. I have not watched anyone's reviews or read any articles, so this is pretty much just a couple of what my subscribers told me while we were playing the game. Um, but of course, while I'm playing the game, I actually did enjoy the gameplay. And I think the reason I enjoyed it more than a lot of other people is because I nailed it. I knew exactly what the gameplay of this game was going to be like from the very beginning. I knew it wasn't going to be like Awesome Shadows of Mordor kind of Assassin's Creed gameplay, but um, I knew it was going to be more like... Um, stinks uh i'll here's a picture from that game i knew it was going to be more like that game okay um i knew that nine ten months before the game came out i was like when i saw some footage of their trailer i was like ah okay it's gonna be that kind of gameplay puzzles climbing simulator that kind of thing right it's not going to be like and then storytelling like that's what it was going to be and i nailed it i was like not to brag but i nailed it i knew exactly what it was going to be like i told some people ahead of that but I think a lot of people were expecting a little bit more in-depth ability to do stuff, right? You know, sneak around and kill people and stab or whatever. You know, that kind of thing. Um, you can kill orcs. You can, like, throttle them. But it's more like part of the puzzle, right? Like, you can't do it to every orc. That kind of stuff. So, orcs that have helmets you can't do. And that kind of things. So... Now let's go into a few things. The first thing that I would say is save points, okay? Save points were excellent in this game. There was one time if you watch all my streams that I was disappointed, but the save points were automatic. You couldn't do them yourself, but they would just save, 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 save. So if you failed something, you wouldn't have to go back and replay 20 minutes of this puzzle, which would be utterly annoying, right? That was not a thing. Save points were fantastic. Great game mechanic in that way. That was a big plus for right there. So boom. Big thumbs up for that one. This is going to help this rating of gameplay and mechanics, okay? Um, the um, repetitiveness got a little old. The puzzles, some of them got better, right? So um, some of the, the puzzles got better over time. They got a little bit more complex or a little a new mechanic, that kind of thing. But there was a repetitiveness there. Um, there was a thing also that, um, on a positive note, is that it was very easy to know what was part of the puzzle. They did... It, was, it looked good into the art style of the area to make it look realistic, but at the same time you knew, oh, that little kind of rim, that's what I jumped to. This little thing going up the wall, that's what I run up. You know, this little thing, oh, you're supposed to throw this, you know, the stone, you know, that kind of thing. That was very well done, okay? So when it comes to game mechanics of being able to know what to do next, they made that very easy, okay? Maybe too easy for some people's feelings, but for me it was perfect because I still had struggled at a few things, but pretty much I was able to get through the game. I still feel like the puzzle was there more, the puzzles and climbing things were there more for the story and kind of a little thing in between the story. So the game felt like almost more to me of a story game where you occasionally had to do a small puzzle that was not super duper hard, but um, I might have personally liked it a little bit more on the focused on the puzzles and gaming than focused on the... Um, story on that way yeah i like the story though a lot so we'll go into that in a second but a couple more things here i have written down i already told you um um it was a little slow when it comes to gameplay and mechanics at the beginning of the story a lot of people complained it lost a lot of people's attention this is another one besides bugs and glitches that it lost people's attention in the gameplay was that it felt very slow in the mordor part of the story okay very very slow and that was kind of like, uh, you know, at the beginning. I still enjoyed the Mordor parts, but it felt really long. They needed to move it along a little quicker. But again, the story felt good. But the gameplay, how many puzzles they did during that time, kind of felt a little bit monotonous slightly for that little bit. Again, you can see my streams and videos if you'd like to watch for yourself later on after this video. All right. So then, uh, but showing us the next area with a panning of the screen, that was another nice thing I would say for the gameplay, is that the screen would occasionally pan and show you a certain area, right? Like this is where you have to get to, right? Um, that was very nice. I thought that was well done um, for another gameplay perspective and point there. Um, being able to use some commands was kind of fun. Like if you click a Z, it would do different like little things where he'd like fight a bug or he'd go, My <laughs> you know, he'd do things like that. He'd do little uh, effects, things like that. And also he had like little collections and there was a little map. The map was pretty much useless. There is one effect that I, I kind of forgot to use where he's able to actually click something and it'll show you where you need to go next with like this effect in this in the like almost like another realm kind of thing um that was cool uh i forgot to use it for a while i should have used it in one part you could see my reviews but uh that was a very nice game mechanic as well okay so that was really really nice 
those kind of things. Um, the map, again, felt kind of useless. It was kind of just there for looks. Um, every time I used it, it seemed pointless, the map. So not really a map, but at least as a puzzle game, it showed you where to go next if you use that one button, right? Again, you can watch my stuff for that. All right. So that is pretty much gameplay and mechanics. All right. And I will rate the gameplay and mechanics a 7.5 out of 10. Okay, 7.5 out of 10. That is the rating for the game and mechanics. Again, the reason it's a little higher, I think, than most people would give it is because I nailed it. I knew exactly what the gameplay was going to be like. So, and this is not a gameplay that I would personally like to play all the time. I don't mind puzzles and climbing simulator things, but that's not my kind of game. As you know, on the channel here, we play Lord of the Rings Online, The Battle for Middle Earth, Rise to War, um, The Shadows of Mordor, and a bunch of other games. Those are the kind of things I like, the genres. Um, I'm not really a huge fan in like the puzzle game area. So it's fun one time through. I did enjoy it, um, but I had to be in the mood for it. That kind of thing, okay? All right, so on to the next point. Point number two, realistic stealth, okay? I actually really enjoyed how they made you feel, okay, in this game. This is a big one. I really thought this was really well done. That's why I made it its own point entirely, okay? Gollum, you felt like Gollum. You felt low, you felt small, you felt low to the ground. You felt like you were sneaking around while these orcs are walking by with their legs while you're under a table, that kind of thing. It was really well done. Um, while you were stealthing, this is kind of flies back to game mechanics, but I put it here. Um, there were like smoke under the tables. You kind of knew that was the area you could be where you were stealthed, or there were flowers or bushes, and that's the area you could be stealthed when you walked into them. Um, that was really well done, okay? Also, I would say that, like, when they were trying to find you, the little thing that goes over their head, that was a very classic, like, almost Shadows of Mordor, Assassin's Creed, other, like, telling you, oh, they're looking for you, right? So, again, point number two, here's some of the stuff. Um, but that was really cool to me, okay? So, the stealth was excellent. It felt like you were sneaking. Right? Uh, it felt like you were actually sneaking through. Uh, Middle Earth, and you didn't have your ring of power, so you had to be really stealthy, right? You couldn't put your ring on because he's trying to get his ring back, right, in the story time. Again, we'll talk about that in the lore part here in a second. But that was really well done. It felt very realistic. It didn't take me... I never felt, like, taken out of the um, immersion of the stealth sneaking, okay? It felt... It made sense to me, him sneaking by people, running by on the ground, because that's Gollum right? That was really, 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 really well done. All right. So I really like that. Again, I even watched a, a shout out to one of another channel that I like to watch Shadowversity. Have you ever seen that channel? Um, he does a lot of medieval stuff. He talked about rogues and stealth and the immersion of being realistic and stuff in a game. I thought that they actually did a good job on that in the Gollum game. Okay. So that was really well done. All right. So there we go. Point number two. Let's go to point number. Th All right. Point number three. Here we go. We got to talk about these points. The optimization and glitches of the game. Okay, this was very bad. Unfortunately, this is what overshadowed the game, all right? Um, by the way, the previous one with the stealth, I would have given that a 9 out of 10, okay, with the stealth things. I forgot to rate that next last point, but that's what I would give that. Again, it's a small, I won't take a big chunk out of the full rating, but that was a good one. So, bugs and glitches, this one, okay? I was very disappointed in this. I'm so many of the people where a lot of people just quit the game because of this problem. Um, the optimization was terrible. Again, I can overlook some things, but there were a few things. One thing for me with a computer that really ran the game beautifully, but I couldn't stream and record it because it was working. My computer worked so hard. It made the recording and streaming, which we did. I could do it, but it was glitchy, right? It was a little laggy. Uh, it's still able, you still enjoyable to watch if you want to check it out. But um, basically uh, when you're walking as Gollum on the ground or something, occasionally it would just, flip your screen, right? And boop, and you'd fall off something. It was like, that was driving me crazy. You see in a couple of my videos and recordings, that was a big one. That was like, oh, just flipping the screen for no reason. I did not move my mouse, nothing, just boop. And then you go off because you're running full speed, right? To run away from something or in the game or running away from an orc, that kind of thing. Um, another thing with the optimization is uh, falling through the ground, okay? This didn't happen a whole lot, but there's one spot in Mordor where I got to the edge of spot where you probably shouldn't be. But still, realistically, usually in a video game, they put up an invisible wall, right? But if there's somewhere you can walk where it's still flat, 
and you walk, and you just fall through the wood into the abyss below, into the lava of Mount Doom, and die, and then now you've ruined the entire story because Gollum died, so that means Frodo didn't get to drop the ring in with Gollum, and, well, I mean, you know, that ruins everything. Okay, that's a joke. But um, anyway, again, that was bad. I was falling through things. It was kind of hilarious. We were laughing our heads off as a stream. If you guys remember, you go watch the stream. But that was like, oh, what the heck? What the heck? Why is that even a thing? Did they not run around at every little inch of the game and test their own game to see if things would fall through? That was not tested, right? So right there, that's a big no-no, big oof on the rating for me. Invisible people. A couple of the stories, the people were invisible when they were talking. The elves. They weren't there. And... That's no good. That's no good when NPCs just are not there. And they were a little glitchy, the NPCs, sometimes and stuff. Um, we'll talk about how they looked and stuff on the my next point here in a second. But overall, oof. And it was a little, again, not optimized where I can't stream it with my amazing system and record it in super clear, you know, 60 frames, 2K. That's, that's a no-no, especially when I could do some of these newer games in really nice definition, right? Now, again... To be give them a little uh, a little positive, we've been having a lot of problems with video games. If you guys have all been playing, if you're all gamers out there, which I know a lot of you on my channel are, or watching this right now, we've been having a lot of problems with video games having glitches, even from big companies. But me personally, I was really, really, really rooting for this company with the Gollum game because I wanted to see a little indie company do good with a, with a Lord of the Rings game. I was really excited. I get a little tired of always having to have video games come out of really big companies. Um, not that there's not good ones, right? That some of these big companies make really good games. But back to my other point, there's been a lot of glitches, right? Again, not to rag on some of these games, which I like, but like Cyberpunk 77, um, I haven't really played it that much, but that game is kind of where it started a few years ago, where just big companies were releasing games that just didn't feel optimized, and they hit massive glitches. They, like, weren't tested, right? Um, the New World, right? The MMO from Amazon. A couple things. They just, like, people were like, why are these giant companies and, and things, even if they're newer ones and have all this money, having problems, right? So that's not really to say that that shouldn't, um, that shouldn't cover for the Gollum Games failure, though, with that. Um, I really, I really was rooting for them and they seemed really nice, uh, especially since they released that letter, right? Um, I'll link, I'll link right here, that letter. Okay. Um, they released that and it was like, I felt bad for them almost. I felt like to me that they were pressured by somebody up high in their company to get it out and they didn't have enough manpower and they couldn't finish it. They couldn't finish testing it. They, the, whoever was the designers of the actual gameplay, because when it comes to lore and stuff like that, it felt like they truly loved it. But anyway, that's that point. So bugs and glitches, I mean, it's gotta be the lowest, like it's like a one, 1.5 out of 10 guys. It, it's terrible. Okay. 10 would be no glitches, right? No bugs. It was, it was pretty bad. For me, if I was going to rate it for me, it would be like a 6 out of 10 because there really wasn't that many bugs. But for how many people told me that they couldn't even play the game, it has to be a rating fairly for you guys, for my subscribers. And just for me in general as a game, it's got to be like a 2 out of 10, 1.5 out of 10. Again, I'll link it right here. Okay, that's my review number of it, uh, whatever I put there. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, next point. Here we go. Okay. Graphics and visuals, all right? Point number four. Um, excellent. I liked how the game looked. I actually enjoyed the art style of the game, the graphical art style. I thought it was well done. Again, this ties into what we just talked about, so this will be a short point. Um, it ties into the fact that it, um, you know, it looked like, you know, the other one. Uh, it was well done. I like the art. I thought it was good. I thought the I thought it looked like Middle Earth to me. Okay, I thought it was really good. Um, it was pretty good graphics in that way. They weren't amazing. I'm gonna talk about the art style in a minute as another point separately. So this one doesn't really have that much, but just with visuals and stuff, um, the NPCs animation was kind of old fashioned. So that was a negative for me. It felt a little bit like cringy, like old, like they were from a game from 10 or 15 years ago where they just kind of watch generically and sometimes their bodies would move kind of like eh, eh, with the graphics, not really that great. Um, but when it came to other things like Gollum's animations, he felt pretty good to me, except <laughs> again, back to the glitches point, he could sometimes distort weirdly. You're like, that's more than Gollum should even be able to do. Right. So yeah, but, um, I've seen some, a couple things now. Um, but 
overall, I liked the graphical design of the game. Um, the graphics were fine. I would rate the graphics and visuals overall like a, let's say a 6 out of 10, okay? Um, the reason for that is uh, they were fine, but considering the bugs and optimization with this point from the previous point, it, should, it shouldn't have been so glitchy and laggy. The graphics were not that amazing, right? Um, again, they were an art style. I, I like to judge games on the art style, right? But we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a second with a different point. But yeah, overall, the graphics were... They had a little bit of issues, but they were fine. I thought they were good. But when it comes to because it was also buggy, it gets a lower one. So that's the rating for that one. All right, next... All right, point number five. This kind of goes with point number four, but I wanted to break them up. Art style. All right, again, I was saying graphical art style, but art style. Just in general, their choices on what they picked how things looked in Middle Earth, how scenery looked, how characters looked, that kind of thing. Um, I might do a separate video where I go deep dive into characters, each character and what I thought about them, but we'll talk a little bit about that in the story arc point. But overall, art style. It was pretty good. I like the art style personally quite a bit. Um, Gandalf, I liked Gandalf's voice and stuff. I liked his, I liked to look at his hat, all that kind of stuff. Everything was very, a little bit more flamboyant with characters in this in the Gollum game I thought they went like they really deep dive differently in that and um, I want to talk about something too with that here in a second um, Gandalf a little more on Gandalf Gandalf's beard was almost black um, when he's Gandalf the gray and we know he has a gray beard in the story so but you could you could sort of maybe say it was gray it's 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 more more dark all right more dark more black so um, that was probably something I wouldn't have liked the choice of much. The orcs, they were fine. I liked the orcs in the art style um, here. I did not enjoy, <laughs> I heard one or two of my friends say this. I did not really enjoy their helmet. I think the reason their helmets, if you've seen in the game, they look like giant snails or something. They're really weird or like shells. Um, they're really weird. They're nice and shiny, but weird. Again, why would they be shiny? Orcs don't like to take care of things. But I think the reason why they were so ridiculously flamboyant giant helmets was a game back to game point mechanic. They wanted people to be able to see oh, that person has a helmet on. You can't kill them as Gollum, right? You can't get by them that way. That was kind of, I think, just to make sure people could see that as a visual aid. But um, it was overboard. It was overboard. So that was, I didn't like that look. Now the elves seemed... Here's the big thing about the elves. Okay, so we talked about the orcs and elves. They're kind of the main people we see in the story, right? Those are the main races. We don't really see any, we don't see any hobbits besides obviously Gollum being sort of a hobbit. Um, and uh, we don't really see any humans in the story. Very interesting. It's pretty much just Gandalf, the elves of Mirkwood, and orcs, right? And again, that's sort of a spoiler, I guess. But if you... This review is going to have some spoilers in it. And by the way, guys, you're free to use those timestamps and jump to different points if you'd like to. I understand. Um, because this is a full in-depth review. I get that. Uh, but back to the elves. The elves are um, a little bit overly done looking naturey. Okay? I felt like the elves were more like... Again, Tolkien is the father of fantasy. So he kind of gave us the groundwork of a lot of these fantasy things in the versions they are today. Obviously, there's elves and other lores from a thousand years ago in our world, right? But they're not the kind of elves we think of nowadays from Tolkien's fantasies, right? And they're in Warhammer, Warcraft, you know, Divinity 2, D&D, &D, right? All these, this is Tol because of Tolkien, right? These ideas. But I felt like a lot of those genres that took from Tolkien for their ideas changed things. Uh, Divinity 2, Warhammer, um, the universe, Elves there are kind of more scrawny looking, more lanky. They don't really look as humanoid. I mean, as human, they look like humanoids, but they're not as human. Um, that's kind of what I made. They made the elves look very, um, very unhuman, very not attractive. I don't care if they're attractive, okay, for their storytelling. That's not the point. But if you, they didn't, they looked almost alien, like they were from Mars or something, right? Um, but again, more like D and D. Some of the D and D elves, but. Of course, some D&D elves look nice. It depends on the people doing the art. But Warhammer and, like, Divinity 2, if you've ever played that game, they looked more lanky, scrawny, kind of weird face, weird, long, gated faces. Um, they still looked sort of human. Like, they could be human. But they were very... I didn't like it, personally. Um, 
Now, did I like some of the characters of the elves? Absolutely. I like some of the characters. We'll talk about that in a minute more on. But we're talking about the art style right now. The game was so vast feeling. This is a big point for me. The game did this excellently. You felt like it was Middle Earth. Everything felt huge. It made you feel so tiny as Gollum, right? So tiny and insignificant as you greed for the ring the whole time, right? So they did a really good job with that. I felt like the world was really fast. I love the art style of the world. Middle Earth looked great, okay? Even the made up stuff, even like the Candleman's Tower, right? In Mordor, which is a made up location, right? Obviously, uh, for the story. That was really good. It was gorgeous. I love that shot, that one part where they show in the video of him showing the Witch King taking out one of the kings, right? And Candleman's talking to Gollum. Really well done. The art style in that way was gorgeous of the game. I, I really like the art style, okay? So overall, even with the dislikes of stuff, I will give the art style an 8.5 out of 10. I actually really enjoyed the art style. It was really well done um, overall. I, I thought it was really good. And um, what do you guys think? Leave your comments, of course, for all these points. I'd love to hear for every single point what you guys think out of my review. I would love to hear that. I don't even care if you disagree with me or, or you totally agree with me. Or maybe you think it should have been a better rating. Totally up to you. Um, sizes and perspective. That was another one, right, for the art style. Everything felt well well put into perspective, right, for your character. Like, oh my gosh, the world's so big, I have to get up there kind of thing. Um, it felt like Gollum had to overcome all these things. And he's overcoming them for his greed of the ring, right? It's amazing how, like, that's motivating him. Compared to, like, in The Lord of the Rings, how Frodo and Sam are motivated by trying to save the world, right? They're trying to... They're, that's why they're going to climb, you know, the Pass of Iligunko, you know, where she is. On Goliath, right? Um, well, not on Goliath. That's Shelob's creator, Cheese Evil. Different thing. Um, but, like, by Minas Morgul, you know, the path. The Endless Stair. All right, so that's what I give the rating for that one. And now we're off to the next point. Music. Okay, let's talk about the music. You guys know me and my channel. I, whenever I ever review something or rate a video game or a movie or a TV series or whatever it is, right? I always talk about how music is so important to it. It's extremely important, okay? Music is so important. I would say music is 50% of a video game. Gameplay is important, it not glitching, that kind of stuff. That's the other 50% for me, usually. This is very generic. But, like, I obviously would go into more detail otherwise. But music is extremely important to me. How was the music for me, personally? What do you guys think in the comments? The music for me was fine, okay? Unfortunately, not a great word to use for it. It was fine. Um, it's, some, it's music that got me in the moment. It felt like the locations I was in. It got me feeling stressed when there was like running from orcs. It was well done to give you the emotional feelings in the game. But what it didn't do is it didn't stay in my head. And I'm someone who usually when I watch a really good piece of music, it stays in my head. I remember it. I love it. Where most people, they'll just want it. They'll forget about the music in a TV show. I'll remember it, right? Um, when it comes to the Gollum game, only one or two pieces do I remember parts of it where I'm like oh that was really good I like that theme song of that part of the story it wasn't really there it was more written to be background music like real background music but again I would argue real good background music occasionally will pop out at a good point and come back in right you see that for example Rohan in Peter Jackson's score from or not his score his movie from John Howe right um when he does the horns, na, 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 and they like pop out when they're showing a one up on the hill. That's gorgeous. And the music goes back in the background. Those kind of things are important. Music is important. Okay. It's, it's important. That's where a lot of our classical music has gone in the last 50 years. It's gone into movies, video games. I love classical music. A lot of people hear classical music and they think it's boring. It's not. Okay. It's amazing. Star Wars, all of this music, that's classical music. Dun, 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 dun. Now, that's a little bit more modernized classical music than, like, Mozart, Beethoven, but we're not going into a history lesson on music. So, anyway, what's my rating on music for it? I'd say, uh, 6.5 out of 10. All right? That's about where I'd rate the Gollum's music. It's not incredible, but it's not terrible. It's good. It's fine. Okay? That's where I rate that one. So, off to the next point. All right, point seven. Sound effects in the game. Sound effects. Okay. Um, this one was pretty good for me. I like the sound effects in the game. Um, they were awesome. I like the Nazgul sound effects were fine. The fell beasts, um, a lot of the creatures, the, the groaning of things moving and the parts and 
It was fine. There's one or two spots that are a little loud, but that happens in a lot of video games. Um, that was really, really cool to me. I really thought that was really, really well done. Um, I liked the sound effects. I thought they were good. Another big thing with sound effects for me was if you, and this, I actually liked this. Maybe some people didn't like this, but when they, when, when they were talking in Gollum's head, like another voice, like Gollum was talking to Smeagol, or, you know, they're telling the story at the beginning, they're actually telling, Gollum's telling Gandalf what happened in Mordor, even though you're playing through it. Um, basically every time Gollum and they're talking off in the head where they're doing the story where you're playing of the thing, it's like in one ear, so stereo. So there's usually there's stereo, which is two sides of your headphones, right? And then there's like 5.1 surround sound, which is stereo, and it's got five spots and a bass kind of thing. Um, so some people might not have liked that. I thought that was a cool effect. At first I thought it was a glitch, I'll be honest. I was like, wait, why am I only hearing sound? And then I realized, oh, it's the way they're telling the story. That's to let you know that that is, that's what's happening. Not right there in the moment where you're walking, but it's what's being told in the story. There's also a moment where Gollum's being talked to by an elf in his mind, which kind of Galadriel does, which I think is fair that they did that same thing it's plays in only one side of the stereo i think it's the left side uh an interesting effect i don't know if i would really always want them to do that in games but um it was an interesting effect to make sure you understood that it wasn't in that moment right okay so that was kind of a cool one so sound effects i'd give them a seven out of ten they were good they were good um they weren't amazing but they were good and i thought that was a cool effect so all right point eight now this is a big one all right the story, the story arc, the storytelling, okay? Now, this is outside of the realm of the lore. I'm going to have a different point for lore um, that we'll cover real quickly, but this is the bulk of one of the points. Eight, story, okay? How did they do it? Now, here's the thing. I'm going to premise something real quick. I, I enjoy story being added like fan fiction that is believable in the confines of the original storyteller of Tolkien, okay? I thought the Gollum game, here's my hot take, did this extremely well. I think some people disagree with me, maybe that's fine. You can disagree with me. Um, they did this really extremely well. You know why I think they did this well? In the story and the lore, the way they start this game, again, this is gonna be some spoilers, but I'm sure you don't care at this point. Um, they start the game being, Gollum has lost the ring. He just got released by Sauron or escaped. He got released, as we all know. Um, and he's trying to find the ring, right? Tolkien tells us specifically what happens in some very broad times. He got released, some stuff a couple months later, Aragorn finds him, captures him, brings him to Mirkwood. He's there for a couple months. He gets out because an orc attack. Boom, he leaves after he's been questioned by Gandalf. Gandalf leaves, an orc attack attacks Mirkwood, and... Gollum is able to escape that, and then you get to the Lord of the Rings books, right? There's they're very vague, giant time gaps, months, months in between that Tolkien doesn't talk about. That's what they do with the storytelling. They put you into those gap in timelines. I thought they did this extremely well, okay? Like extremely well. Um, again, some people might disagree with me, but I, as a hardcore loving all the background of Tolkien lore thought this was really well done. And now again, this is not something I'm going to bring this in for a second, but like, for example, you, if you've watched my reviews of the rings of power TV show, this is what I didn't like about the rings of power. Okay. Um, whether I, there's some stuff I like, some stuff I really didn't like in the rings of power. They did a lot of stuff that counter, they did their own fan fiction basically, uh, in with, with stories and locations, but it wasn't in between any open gaps. They meshed things up. They they broke things that Tolkien told us, right? So they actually contradict Tolkien in many ways in the Rings of Power series. That's why it bothers me. So that's a fan fiction. Sure, you can still call that a fan fiction. People can still enjoy it, you know, that kind of stuff. But when the Gollum game comes, they you can tell the people who wrote the storyline for the Gollum game respected and liked Tolkien and Middle-earth and Gollum. They cared about it. They didn't They didn't want to hurt it. They were like, we want to enhance and add to the story. And this is what happened in these gaps, our storytelling and our ideas. But we don't want to affect what Tolkien told us. So we have to make it in a way where there's not characters that will, will stand out. That would be like, why wasn't that character there in the story later then? Blah, blah, blah. Right? In the actual story of Tolkien. Really well done. Okay? So let's talk about that. Let's break the tension a little bit into these points. Again, that you see on the screen here next to me now. Um... Good cutscenes, really good cutscenes. I thought the cutscenes were very enjoyable. Um, I 
I liked them. I thought they were good. I love the characters. Um, a lot of them, not all of them. Again, um, we have to talk about the characters a little bit right here. I'm going to probably have a separate video talking about the characters in the future, possibly. But pretty much, like, Candleman, I actually thought he was a cool character. I'm still not entirely sure if he was supposed to be a traitorous Gondorian or if he was a black Numenorian. I think he was supposed to be a traitorous Gondorian. But I'm not entirely sure there. Um, and then uh, I liked his daughter. I thought, like, as a bad guy, she was a bad. She was bad, right? Um, I, I just liked how it was very under the radar. Like, she was evil, but she was insane, right? She was an insane, evil servant of Sauron. And then the mouth of Sauron, he was fine. Um, obviously, I like the Peter Jackson version better, a little bit more mysterious, dark. But again, he looked like a black Numenorean. He looked really scary, really messed up. Um, very manipulative. There's like a little political structure happening between those three characters under that makes sense to me totally because the evil. Um, I was not uh, Odo, was that uh, <laughs> no, Odo's from Game of Thrones? The guy that reminds me of Odo from Game of Thrones. Um, I can't think of his name right now. His character was fine. I didn't really like his character. I didn't like it because, again, going back to the graphics of NPCs, uh, he was so slow in like moving and it was like a little painful and it seemed janky how he moved a lot. Um, he was an interesting character since he's like a spice trader from Harad, right, from the south. Cool. That was kind of cool. Um, I felt like all the characters made sense, right, what they looked like from even from the art style back to that. Um, but when it comes, again, to the story, I really liked a lot of those characters. I liked a lot of the prison characters, like the one guy that's trying to help get out with Gollum. Um, I liked the elf. Uh, I didn't really like how they... I liked how they did Gandalf. Thranduil he was fine i didn't really like how they made him seem he almost seemed obsessed like i know they do that in the hobbit movies too but in the books i just don't feel like that is the case with him i feel like he's stubborn he wants to protect his people he has some issues because he's gone through a lot in his thousands of years of life um but he is a good ruler and still cares but um i still felt like it was okay it was in within reason now Gollum's personality okay Gollum, um how they portrayed things with Gollum I felt like it was pretty good right it was pretty good I didn't feel like they were like amazing like so some of it I was like oh that's totally Gollum and Smeagol right back and forth back and forth and some of it was kind of like I don't know if Smeagol or Gollum would have been like that right is like nice or something or whatever um again it was a choice thing in there um that was another thing with storytelling. I'm going to put this here into this point storytelling instead of the gameplay point, which I didn't put this there. But the choices, they didn't really feel super, super impactful when it came to gameplay. But really, they were part of the storytelling, the story arc. They were fine. I thought they were interesting. It was kind of fun to see Gollum and Smeagol go back and forth. Um, I didn't really go through and play it again yet at the time of this review. Of course, I played 20 hours already and played through the whole game and finished it. But apparently you can change certain things but i'm not sure how much you can actually change okay that's another thing so i think that's more of a story arc thing than an actual gameplay element that's why i put it here with the choices um so that's what i think about that at least um and then when it comes to the uh how they walk through the timeline is good of their made-up stuff right of their made-up fan fiction version of the lore um, I love how, and then of course the actual stuff, right, from the storytelling, where we know Gandalf is does interrogate Gollum, which was really well done. He doesn't hurt him or anything, but you know he uses like the light at him and kind of he's like ah, you know, like it, it, it was good. It was well done. I thought how I would have assumed Gandalf would have interrogated Gollum, um, and uh, I thought that was really well done in the storytelling where they start with you start off you're in the dungeon at Dogal Door. Then you basically are telling Gandalf what you happened in Mordor until you get up to there, and then you're caught by they just mention Aragorn for a second. All right, so that's kind of weird. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, and then, uh, boom, you're in the dungeon. Then you get in the dungeon and you're released. Right, you're released. You can watch my whole thing to play through. I really liked the elf girl. I actually thought she was a cool character, the blind elf, um, and a couple other of the like the cook and stuff. I thought they were neat. They had almost like you could tell they started having a little bit of a relationship as in talking and knowing Gollum because he was there for months. That was kind of cool, right? That was kind of cool. Again, another big thing to finish up the story is that basically Gollum has like this bird he trained that was kind of random, but I actually kind of ended up liking that part of the story. I don't know how realistic that is to the story, but I kind of enjoyed it. Um, but basically what happens is that bird ends up betraying Gollum 
and the elves. And he gets the orcs to come to save Gollum kind of thing, even though they want to kill him and capture him at this point. Um, and basically he attacked, and that's how Gollum leaves. But he gets a bunch of the elves killed, and he almost has, like, an emotional, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that, the, the Smeagol side. Which is, I thought was good from a storytelling perspective. I thought it was really well done. Um, so, yeah. That was, uh, that's about it with the story. I thought it was pretty well done. The pacing was too slow. Again, like I said, gameplay, the pacing was too slow during Mordor. It, 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 it dropped a lot of people off real quick. They should have moved through Mordor a little quicker and got to more parts of the game so people felt like they were advancing quicker because there's a lot of chapters in Mordor. I think there's a total of 10 chapters in the game. It's how they, like, set the storytelling. Um, yeah, it, it was, there was, like, four or five. There was, like, four of them in Mordor. So it was a lot. It was a lot. So, um. That's it for the storytelling, though. So what do I give storytelling? All right. What do I give to it as my rating? I would give storytelling a 9.5 out of 10. Yep. That good. That good. Um, the storytelling was excellent. That's why I'm so disappointed that the game was so unoptimized and glitchy because I think a lot more people would have been like, dang, that was a good game. Like, even though I didn't really care for the gameplay, like, I love the story, right? Um, I think a lot of people couldn't even play the story or see the story. Again, if you want to see the whole story, you can go watch my videos and streams after this over the next you guys, 20 hours of it. So I'd be amazed if you go and watch the whole thing. I'd appreciate that greatly. Don't forget to like and subscribe still, of course. Um, it helps out the channel a lot. This was a really big video to make, and I've been working and planning this video for months. So not months, excuse me, a month, weeks and weeks and weeks, um, of time there. Uh, so no yeah about two months long time all right so let's move on to the next point all right point nine lore the lore um this kind of goes in the last point so this won't be a very long point um but the lore was pretty good it wasn't like amazing but again tolkien doesn't give us that much to go on right he really doesn't give that much to go on in this part of the story he is the they kept the generic chunks of what tolkien said about this story um, I would have liked a little more of Aragorn, a little more of Gandalf, maybe. Um, I think the reason they stayed away from using those characters is because those are characters that are off doing other things and they didn't want to make it. They wanted their fan fiction to fit into the story and not contradict something. So, if, like, oh, if Aragorn's here, then how is he not off in the Shire doing this at this time, right? Um, so they wanted to be very careful not to contradict Tolkien. I really greatly appreciate that. I thought that was really well done. Um, so... And overall, the lore was pretty, pretty good. I liked hearing some of the storytelling. Um, I felt like when it comes to magic in this, there was a lot more magic in magic. Sorry. Um, that's a joke, joke from Livy Dirt League, if you know that series. Um, but the magic in the system, there's one moment, there's a crystal that reminds me a little bit of Dark Crystal. Honestly, if you've watched that old Muppet looking series, Dark Crystal, um, where they're like, nuking people for like i don't know evil magical energy and they're just disintegrating um but you have to get by that it's actually really cool um there's a magical thing at the end if you go watch my last video i recorded to see it pretty much it's that the end story the last chapter where the elves have some magical thing they've created to manipulate nature slightly to make this haze of mist all the time which is what protects um Mirkwood. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting lore story there that has nothing to do with the original lore. Uh, it's all made up. But again, with, when it comes to the magic system, Tolkien was very careful to not use magic as a crutch in his stories. He says that. Um, there's obviously lots of magic in Middle Earth, but it's not like a, a level of like, you know, you know, Harry Potter or D&D &D or something where it's like, you know, oh, I'm a wizard. You know, I can cast all these spells. Um even Gandalf is very restrained in the way he casts magic. He does cast magic. Like, you know that in the Fellowship of the Ring, when he fights the Belrog, he casts spells. Literally, you don't see it in the movie, in the books. He literally casts a spell against a door to try to stop the Belrog, a huge door. And the Belrog is countering as a counter spell, is what Gandalf actually is, like, saying. And he says he almost breaks him, Gandalf said. So they're, like, fighting with magic, basically. You know, it's, the, it's like the Voldemort Dumbledore moment in the Harry Potter series, which again, we all know Dumbledore's a little bit inspiration inspired by Gandalf, as we know from that series, uh, from the, the author. But, um, again, Lord of the Rings, Tolkien inspired so much coolness, right? But so the magic system is much more lowered. The magic system in the Gollum game was brought up quite a bit. Um, but I still think it is believable in the, in the overarching of middle earth and how Tolkien put things. I don't think it like, 
well, that's a thing, then that's, you know, that's ridiculous. That's OP. You know, that's silly. That shouldn't be a thing. It was believable to me. It might have been a little overboard, honestly, in my opinion, but it was believable. So what is my rating on the lore after talking about that? The lore, I would rate a 8 out of 10 because they respected Tolkien so much, even though they were making more of a fan fiction, okay? But actually, the actual lore that they brought in that we know of Tolkien, which is a very small bit, right? That's why we, the storytelling was a bigger point. Um it felt like they didn't contradict Tolkien and they tried to fit their fan fiction storytelling in the original lore that Tolkien gives us. So good for them. Eight out of 10. That's what I give them for that. Again, leave your comments. I'd love to hear what you guys think. If you've played through the game or watched all my playthroughs or watched anything. So you know about it. Um, yeah. All right. Next point. All right. Now this is a big one. Voice acting and sounds of the voice acting. Um, we already talked about sound effects, but this is voice acting. Exactly. Okay. Um, this is my, I put this my 10th point because my channel is a big on voice acting, obviously, Voice of the Rings. I do voiceovers of lots of different characters in the Lord of the Rings, the MMO, as a lot of my medium I use, but I also do other things as well. Um, so this is a big one for me. I loved Gandalf's voice, okay? Gollum's voice grew on me. I wasn't sure at first because Andy Serkis' voice from the Peter Jackson adaptation is amazing. But once I really listened to him for about an hour or two, I was like, this is really well done. This voice actor is really good for Gollum and Smeagol. So amazing job there. Uh, I thought I really liked Gollum. I really liked that. Thranduil was a good voice actor. I liked the voice actor for a lot of the evil characters that were made up. I liked the voice actors for the orcs. They were cool too. Um, uh, some of them had like more of an English accent thing it's always like why are we making them eat <laughs> but um i still thought they were good they were good voice actors and um i thought that was a little funny though because i'm like why why don't the orcs sound a little bit like like they're cockney english some of them or something um but uh still they were really good they did sound like bad guys when they were doing the voices of the orcs you know um that was well done. I liked a lot of the elf voice actors. They were fine. I liked how they'd say things from echoing far away and be like, what's he doing up there? they like, <laughs> like Gollum as you climb things. It's like, I don't know. Just ignore him. <laughs> the elves when you're in Merkwe. So I mean, so that was funny. Um, there was lots of good little jokes in there for the voice actors. Uh, again, when the sound thing, like we talked about one ear, it sounded mysterious when she's talking in his head the echo effect of her voice that was really well done whoever did the sound in the game for voices and recording of the voice act actress was really well done you could tell the people who did the voices really cared they put a lot of motion in you didn't feel like drawn out of the story because someone didn't sound realistic the only person that i maybe kind of got me a little feeling like out like suddenly like oh wait is this is the the big character again from mordor but even him he had he had the way in his accent and stuff he did feel like maybe he's from harad or umbar right from the south um, with a little bit different sound than like the elves and stuff. So again, good voice acting, really, really good voice acting. In fact, so good. I can't think of a voice that I like disliked. All right. In the series. Um, and even like the animals, right. And sound effects, but that was in sound effects. So again, when it comes to voice acting, very impressed overall, I'm going to give voice, I'm going to do it. I'm going to give them one guys. I'm going to give them a 10 out of 10 for voice acting. It was really well done. Um, if you just went and listened to the whole story, without gameplay, just listen to everyone's talking. It's really well done. It's really, really good. That ties in with the story arc, obviously, and storytelling, but I thought the voices were really, really well done. I literally liked Thranduil's voice. I almost like Thranduil's voice more than I like the actor's voice from the Hobbit movies. Not, I like the actor from the Hobbit movies who did Thranduil, but I almost like the voice better in this for this character. Again, their rendition of the voices. And Gandalf was a little bit more of a young sounding Gandalf voice, but still, he sounded like Gandalf. He had a commanding sound. I'm Gandalf. You know, like, it was like, what do you know? <laughs> you know, I was really well done. I really liked Gandalf. Um, and yeah, so sound of, uh, voices, voiceovers were really good. And again, as someone who does a lot of voiceovers now, as I'm getting better and better, I'm not a super expert, obviously, but I'm getting a lot better at it. I've always loved sound, doing sound effects with my voice and changing my voice to other things over my life. So it's been fun to do this for the channel. Um, but there we go, Voice of the Rings. And there's some opinions on the voiceovers. I thought they were pretty darn good. They're obviously not maybe as good as like, I like Peter Jackson's renditions of it in the movies, like Gollum and stuff with Andy Serkis and a couple of them, but they were still excellent for what they were, right? Not holding them up to that. Um, holding them up to that, but even holding them up to the standard, they were close to being just as good. Um, yeah. So there we go. There's that one. Wow. I think we just covered all 10 points. Cool. 
All right, so the moment of truth, the big rating. All right, so let's put all of these points and all these ratings right here. I don't know, I'm gonna put them on both sides, we'll see. Um, let's put them together right now, okay? So I really, really, really enjoyed making this for you guys. Thank you for watching. If you're here all the way to the end, I appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, you go to my live stream, newest live streams, and join our Discord if you're curious. We uh, play, we do lots of Lord of the Rings content on this channel. We're a Lord of the Rings YouTube channel. Um, but I also do reviews, I do voiceovers, we play games. Uh, we do lots of things on this channel. Okay, we do, we're even, even doing lore videos on this channel. Um, and blogs and lots of fun stuff. Lots of fun Lord of the Rings based things, even collection reviews. So, if you're here and you just found my channel with this review, sweet. Welcome to the family if you want to subscribe and like the video, I'd appreciate it greatly. Um, so again, what is my overall opinion on the game? I already gave it to you at the beginning, the quick one. But to finish up, I would say that I would rate it. Drum roll. Don't scare. Um, I would give the game overall on my nice rating. Again, I'm going to give two ratings here. I'm going to give my nice one and more and more critical one, okay? Because I think that's fair. Overall, I actually really enjoyed the game. So I gave you my quick one at the beginning, right? I'm going to say because the story was so good and the voice acting was so good and I actually thought the feeling of your character running around was amazing and you're small and stuff and the gameplay was eh for me even though I expected what it was and stuff and since I personally didn't have that many glitches for me, I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. I know it's a, it seems a little high and everyone, that's my hot take and everyone's going to be like, oh! I think that's what I give it personally. Um, now if I'm going to rate it for you guys, again like I did at the beginning, I would because of the glitches and stuff. Now this is just this is off the the top this is off the side note, but let's just say you can't even play the game. Obviously it's gonna be a horrible rating because you can't play the game. But let's say your computer can run the game and you can enjoy it. I would rate it for you guys a six out of ten still. Even with the glitches and stuff. Um it was good. Now again, that is premised with the fact that I do not think it is worth sixty dollars. Okay? I really I really don't. Um even if it had no glitches, I still don't think the game would have been worth $60. Uh, I think it's a $40 price point game. I would recommend you wait for a sale on Steam and buy it for $30, $20, $15, you know, whatever, if they do a sale on it, that kind of thing. That's what I would highly recommend for you guys. Um, so overall, again, I really thought this, it was a disappointment for me, even though I'm very positive on this channel, it was a little disappointment that it got over the good stuff got major overlooked because, rightfully so, people couldn't play the game, it was glitchy. So why would you like it at all if you can't even play it, right? For a lot of people. Uh, but for me, since I could play the game still, even though I couldn't stream and record it super well, um, it was enjoyable. There were definitely some glitches. I would have personally liked more, better gameplay. If the gameplay, if there had been no glitches and the gameplay had been way more immersive and amazing than just puzzle and climbing simulator, I would have given it probably a 10 out of 10. Cause yeah, so, and again, the only reason I gave it a high eight, you know, 8.5 out of 10 is the fact that for me personally, the storytelling was amazing, okay? And then of course, again, the six out of 10 for you guys, I said the same number, hopefully I said the same number, um, because the fact that it's glitchy for just everyone else, I, that's what I would give you from, more, from my more critical side, right? Again, I wanna be fair there. And again, guys, when I made these views, I didn't, I have been uninfluenced in my unadulterated opinion after me playing the game for 20 hours and making this review and taking the time to make this like hour-ish, almost hour review. Um, so, and again, you can check out all my gameplay down there in the bottom. Uh, yes. So I had all these points made up for you guys. It was a lot of work. So great. Leave your comment on your favorite thing. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you would be great. Thank you to my patrons for their support. I could not do it without them. Um, and if you guys are curious, there's links to that too down there. And you guys have a great and wonderful day in Middle Earth, my friends. And again, we will be playing more Lord of the Rings on this channel, and we will also be playing the Return to Moria game and reviewing that. Depending on when you see this, it might already be out. We might already be playing it. So, um, excited about that. That is also a smaller game company, and I'm hoping and rooting for them. So, that will be awesome. Um, and it's my kind of gameplay from what I've seen. 
That's it, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me for this whole video. I can't believe we got through that. That's That was a lot. That was a lot. So anyway, that is my full thing and my full review of the game. Again, disclaimer, the money thing. Just don't, don't spend the full amount on it, especially if you have a computer that's maybe 5, 10 years old. Uh, you need to look look at the specs first. Look what they recommend the specs. They're ridiculously high. And that's another thing. For the way the game looks graphically, it shouldn't have been that intensive and that hard and that unoptimized and with the glitches, okay? But um, And it did crash for me. I didn't mention that in the glitches, but I mentioned that here at the end. It crashed quite a few times. You can see in my streams and my recording. Um, granted, it probably crashed too because I was trying to stream it. But still, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be crashing, right? No game should be crashing, really. Um, uh, it didn't crash too much for me. It was crashing worse for other people. Um, I probably had, like, out of those 20 hours, I probably had, like, maybe 5, 10 crashes. It's kind of too many still. But anyway, that's it. But again, positive. I really love the storytelling. I thought it was really well done. And again, I'm someone who really knows a lot of the background lore of Lord of the Rings. It wasn't perfect. It didn't perfectly match up with everything, but I thought it was respectful to Tolkien. And I love a fan fiction and a fan story like this from these people that respects Tolkien's lore and doesn't mess with the original lore. When I write my fan fiction, and I will show you some of my lore channels later on, or it might already be out, um, I always, you'll see, I always try to match it up where it respects Tolkien's lore to the best of my ability. So, well done by them. Again, have a great and wonderful day in Middle Earth. One more shout out to my Patreons. Thank you for listening this whole time. And I'm pretty sure I covered everything. So I don't feel like I missed something. But again, remember, I made this completely unadulterated version and unaffected by any other opinions or views. This was just straight what I thought after 20 hours of the gameplay. And that's why I put the title I put. <laughs> Have a great day in Middle Earth. Baruch Kazad Kuzad, I menu. I'll see you all in the next episodes of Voice of the Rings. And remember, my friends, stay happy in Middle Earth. See ya.